Now, I want us to go to the book of Psalms chapter 91. Today we are talking about spiritual covering. Spiritual covering. And uh, the whole year we, we believe that the pillar of protection and security will rest upon us. We shall be secure. You know, the things that want to destroy you are so many. But uh, there is a possibility you may live to old age without trouble. You know? Anyone here who is above 50, anyone here who is above 60, mm -hmm. they can tell you they have gone through situations in life, but they survived. And uh, I pray may you be a survivor. You will survive the storms of life, the, the things that cause people to commit suicide, the accidents, the incidences, you know, all those things. Uh, may God protect you from those things. And uh, if we don't pray concerning covering and protection, there is a tendency of the enemy harassing us, frustrating us. And uh, But when you refuse the harassment of the enemy, you'll have a victorious life. Life is a battle. Life is about fighting. And you cannot avoid battles of life. Battles of life, even surviving, being alive, it takes a strong heart, right? If you are weak, especially through what we are going through, most people will give up. Most people, they have a weak mind. They come to a place where they, they feel like it's better I die than continue, you know, with life and fighting. But listen, life is about fighting and only people who are ready to fight uh, uh, will be successful. Now, from the book of uh, Psalms chapter 91, uh, let me do my introduction today from that verse. And we'll start from verses 1. The book of Psalms chapter 91 verses 1. He who dwells in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. And I will say to the Lord, he is my refuge and my fortress, my God in him I will trust. So God is my fortress. You know what is a fortress? It's, it used to be a place where the military used to guard themselves from the enemy. So he says, my God is my refuge. In him I'll find trust. Surely he shall deliver you from the snare of the flower. That is verse 3. And from the perious pestilence. So he will deliver you from the tongue, the flower. So who, who hides these traps? These, these are human vessels. And so number one, I want us to pray that God may protect us from people who have an assignment of the devil against our lives. You know? hidden traps, hidden dangers. It, it will be naive of you to think that everybody loves you and everybody likes you. You know, our prayers are different from other people's prayers. We don't like, oh, you know, we don't pray prayers to kill people. No, but we are wise enough to guard ourselves from people. Because, you know, it's people who destroy what you try to do. So if you're not careful, they will keep on destroying. Every time you do something, they will destroy your reputation, destroy your progress. And I have learned to have a, a strong heart. Because I know if I allow the devices of men, I will not preach in Nakuru. You know? I remember when I was doing evangelism one day, I don't know if you were with you, but uh, I was busy with a team. And uh, some people were feeling bad that I was doing evangelism in the area because they are pastors. You know, what is wrong with that? You know, I, oh, I have not entered anybody's church. I'm just walking around preaching, you know, which should be celebrated. But they fought Jesus not for anything that he did that was wrong. 
You know, they fought Jesus for every good thing that he did. By the way, the opposition he faced, it was because of doing good things. So you may, you may be one of the best people, very good people, but don't think that people will just celebrate you and clap for you because you are doing good things. They fought Jesus for doing what? Good things. You show me one thing that Jesus did wrong. He healed somebody. It is trouble. You know? He, he, he heals somebody on Sabbath. It is problem. He heals a blind man. Why did you heal? You know, who healed you? Why did you agree to be healed? Can you imagine even they called a blind man <laughs> to question him why? Why he, he allowed that man? Yeah? You remember that story? Even he himself, he had to tell them, I don't know the man, I don't know why. You know, they even threw him out of the synagogue because they felt, how can you agree to be healed? You know, you should have remained the way you are. So listen, people will fight anything that is good. People don't fight. You'll never hear somebody say, oh, you know, uh, these clubs are bad. You know, you'll never hear somebody talk bad about a club owner, but they talk bad about a pastor. You know, they never talk bad about a club manager, but they will talk bad about a man of God. So you need to realize that in this world, there are people who fight the good you're doing. They will oppose the good you're doing. So you need to know how to stop the hidden dangers, the traps that people place on your journey. And one prayer you are supposed to pray, I have always taught you here, I deny all my enemies access. I deny them access over my life. I deny human vessels access over my opportunities. I deny human vessels access over my marriage. You know, whoever is trying to come and destroy my marriage, I deny them access. Whoever that is trying to come and destroy my business, I deny them access. Whoever that is trying to come and destroy the church, I deny them access. Number two, I frustrate their mission. You know, that is a prayer you are supposed to pray. If you notice, I'm not praying for anybody to die. I'm praying for their mission to be what? Frustrated. That any mission against my life, let it be what? Frustrated. Number three, I turn their wisdom into foolishness. Whatever devices they use, whatever plans they, they plan against my life, let those that wisdom be turned into what? Foolishness. And who prayed that prayer? David. Turn the wisdom of Ahithophel into what? Into foolishness. So whatever the device they try. Another prayer you can pray. May you put them on a slippery ground that they are not able to withstand me. Amen. Let them be on a slippery ground. When they try to come against me, let them be on what? On a slippery ground. Meaning, whatever they plan, whatever they do, will fall. Okay, praise the Lord. And you can say again, I arrest their words. I come against demonic expectations, evil expectations, evil imaginations. Anything that is being expected of me that is wrong, I cancel and nullify in Jesus' name. You know, when we talk about demonic expectations... There are people who, who are wishing that you fall from salvation. There are people who are wishing you die. You know, there are people who would be very happy if they felt you are sick. So all those demonic expectations, wrong imaginations. Listen, some of these things are very, very, very effective. When people have these demonic expectations... Have you ever heard of a parent who, did, who is not godly and they usually tell a child, you will become nothing. If we don't come against those things, those demonic expectations, they will take place. You know, we need to come against demonic what? Expectations. So if you're watching wherever you are watching from, I encourage you this morning, that you need to know that there are devices of the enemy all around us. You need to know that not everybody is for you and not everybody is clapping for you. By the way, who betrayed Jesus? 
a stranger? No, somebody very close to him. Even Jesus said, whoever will put his hand with me to eat will betray me. So somebody who betrays you is not very far. So you don't look for betrayal from very far. It usually comes from very near you. So when you are doing business out there, people who can betray you are within your cycle. Amen. The people, you know, like those who are in the transport industry. I had a friend of mine in Mombasa who told me he used to carry me with his taxi, you know, with his vehicle every time I go to Mombasa. And this time I, he had a, a big line here, you know, and, uh, and a lot of, you know, cuts all over his body. And I asked him, what happened, my friend? He had come for, he picked me from the airport. So I asked him, what happened, my friend? He told me, it's a long story, but let me give you the story. You know, I was called by somebody I know. Somebody who has been a friend for a long time. And it was late in the night. And uh, I decided to go pick him, to take him home. And he, he came into the car. There were two men. They sat at the back, you know. And as we are driving, they put a, a rope on my neck. You know, as a driver, they put a rope and pull when they were in, a, when they were slow, slowing, you know, Mahali Kwa Bam PV, you know. And I'm telling you, they, they, he, he, they, they pushed him, they took the car, put him at the back there, you know. The man had a knife and uh, the, he was stabbing him in his own car. You know, the other, the, the driver now, the friend, is driving his car. They went under the bridge. You know, in Mtuapa, there is a big bridge that connects, you know, this side, Shimolatewa, as you go to Mtuapa, Kilifi. And they went under the bridge and they stabbed him like 20 something times, <coughs> beat him with stones, left him for dead. They thought he was dead, threw him there on the beach, near the, not the beach, but near the water, you know. So, they threw him there. And they thought he was dead. And they took the money he had and left. He stayed there until morning, bleeding. People came and found him unconscious. Took him to hospital. He stayed in hospital for months. Then he recovered. You know? And he reported the, the matter. And he said, my friend did this and this and this to me. And he told me one day, he went to a hotel. Who does he meet? The same man. You know? He met him. And they were sitting like, he's sitting here. The guy is sitting there. What do you do now? Do you beat him? Somebody who almost killed you? You know, now he was telling me the case is ongoing. But what I'm trying to tell you is that they are devices of men. Traps of men. And this man told me, that when they were stabbing him, there is a prayer he prayed because he had lost his wife. His wife had died. There is a prayer he, he was praying. I have children in high school. And I pray, oh God, do not allow this man to kill me. So that I may raise these children. Oh God, do not allow this. As they were stabbing him, the knife will go but not through the heart. You know? Not through the kidney. And he prayed, oh God. Do not allow me to die. So later when I arrived in the hotel, he opened his shirt. And I saw those knives everywhere, you know. So people are wicked. Your friend doing that to you. Your friend. To steal your car so that they may sell it. You know. So what I'm trying to say is that uh, uh, we need to overthrow every demonic imagination, demonic plans demonic expectations against our lives. Now, can we continue to verse 4? The Bible says, He shall cover you with what? With feathers. May God cover you in the name of Jesus. Uh, I say again, may you be covered with His feathers. The Bible says, He shall cover you with what? His feathers. And under His wings, you shall take refuge. May that be your prayer every morning before you leave your house. Oh God, in the name of Jesus, I pray, may I be covered with his feathers and 
I pray under his wings, I take refuge. May that be your prayer in the name of Jesus. So when you look around, you can be able to understand that this world is full of what? Wickedness. This world is full of pain. But may God deliver you from that pain. Now verse 5 is a verse that I like praying about. You know, verse 5. You shall not be afraid of the terror by night. Nor of the arrow that flies by day. The Bible says there is a battle that comes in, in the night. So many of us, we go through battles of night. They are battles that take place at night. You find that when you are sleeping, that is when the wicked plan against you. When you are sleeping, that is when the wicked arise. At night, that is when they seek blood. That is when they seek whom? You know, there was a day I looked down from the window. I was here praying alone. And I looked, I could hear noise out there. It was around three. There were times I would come and close the church here alone and sleep as I'm praying here. And I heard a lady shouting. And when I looked, whatever I saw was not good. Because she was being attacked, you know. And later she was forced into a car. But what do I do? You know, what do you do? At night, things happen on these streets. Wicked people wake up. My, a pastor friend of mine, he went to pray in his church with his wife. And at night, young men came with knives, you know, and entered the church and with pangas. And before he knew it, the young men are in the early 20s. They started cutting his head, you know. And he's a man of, uh, he's around maybe 60. And they, he, they, they really cut his face, you know, beat up his wife, uh, and uh, they left them for dead. And they took a few things from the church and ran away, you know. At night, the battle of night, you know. And he went to hospital, and he had to move from where he was living. He had to move that church from that location, you know. Because nowadays, people are not afraid of church. They don't care. I know of a pa another pr pastor I knew in Mombasa. He went to pray alone in the church. They came and shot him. And they, they, they found the pastor dead holding his Bible. You know, the way they shot him. We have very wicked people. People who have grudges against men of God. I think because you used to like waking up in the morning in Mombasa to pray. You know, and you pray with speakers. So there are some people who are not happy about it. You know, you kill a man because he is praying. You know, you cut somebody's head just because of a speaker. You know, and you leave him for dead. So we need to know that they are terrors of the night. They are people who wake up at night to do wicked things. They are people who wake up at night to try and climb walls and attack others. May God protect you from such. The battles of the night. Because you never see somebody carrying a weapon during the day. But at night, they wake up. They try to get to our homes and our houses. May God protect us in Jesus' name. And may God guard us in Jesus' name. You know, there was a day I used to, I used to live somewhere and I had a, a CCTV. And uh, I wake up at night to look at the CCTV. The things I would see, people walking around, <laughs> trying to climb where I'm living, I would almost have a heart attack. So I decided I would never look at the CCTV anymore. Because you can't sleep. Yeah. That is why you see nowadays, I have my grandfather, my grandfather, because he was rich. And he was living in the village where not every, everyone else is not as rich as he was. He had to get a gun. You know, my grandfather had a gun. He went and got a licensed gun. And one day, they came. They came and he, they asked him, old man, can you open the house? And he told the young man, can you go? Just disappear. I don't want trouble. And then one of the young men told my grandfather, when we enter this house, we will take you to Abraham. We will take you to Abraham. We will kill you. But he said, oh, that's what you want. He went to his room and he came with his gun. 
So they were in, in a group discussing how to break his house. He opened the curtain and he had a machine gun. You, you know what he did. My grandfather was dangerous, very strong. <laughs> he feared no one. And he shot and killed two. You know, and some disappeared with blood. My grandfather would carry a gun in his car. There was a time some thieves stopped him. Stopped him. He killed again. And he, he, nobody killed that old man until old age took him out. So people knew in our village, you don't joke with that home. <laughs> uh, one day he even killed a dog that tried to eat eggs. You know, he would wake up. He had a problem with blood pressure and uh, diabetes. A dog came, ate eggs, killed it. He killed even the, the anigo. You know, anigo came to pick a chicken, killed it. So my grandfather, what do you think? Should we have guns? Or will we be violent people like my grandfather? <laughs> so when he died, we had to surrender the gun to, to the police, you know? And uh, may, may his soul rest in peace. But what I'm trying to say is that we have wicked people. And we need to pray against the terror by night. This year I pray that those people who walk, wicked people who walk in the dark. I think even you can give a testimony. This, this young man went through a very hard situation. To a point he stayed in hospital for how many days? Three weeks. They took his motorbike, beat him up with a metal bars, almost broke his jaw. You remember you had, oh, did you have surgery? Or they fixed it back? You see, a young man like this, why do you have to go and get, but may, may you never go through such. You're a man of God. You have gone through a lot. So what I'm saying is that we have people who, through the terror by night, they try to destroy us. May God guard our lives. May God protect us. You know, even there was a day young men were coming to lean on the wall of my house. And I'm like, well, why come lean on my wall? What do you want? You know, and one day I stopped. I thought of preaching to them and then they disappeared. So we have very funny characters, you know. But may the Lord protect us from the terror by night. Hey, hallelujah. We may not have guns like my grandfather. You know, we may not have weapons. You know, but I pray, may God be our protector. May God guard us from the terror by night. Wicked people will not get hold of us. Can I hear an amen? And so today, as I continue preaching and in the Swahili service, we are going to pray and do an anointing service. And we pray, oh God, you are our hope. You are our protector. In you, oh God, we shall find our covering. May you protect us from the wicked people. People who have purpose to destroy our lives, O oh God. Guard us, O oh God, from everyone who is seeking our lives in Jesus' mighty name. And so that, is, that will be our prayer. May God be our covering from the terror by night. When terror comes, it will not affect you. Can I hear an amen? Whoever that is planning to harm you, may the Lord protect you in Jesus' name. May God guard you at night. You'll never be hijacked in Jesus' name. You will never be attacked in Jesus' name. I had a case in this church of one of the ministers, you know, and he's standing on the road. To, he was planning to come to church on Sunday. And uh, somebody stopped with a vehicle, you know, and he thought he was being given a lift. And he entered. I'm telling you, he told me when he got into that car, he was told, welcome, give us money. And he's coming to church on Sunday. So when you see these vehicles that want to give you lift, don't enter. Hey, hallelujah. Be careful. You know, and they took him round. He had, I think, 50 shillings. He didn't have much. So they asked him, where are you going? He said, I was going to church. I'm a pastor. They said, why did we get a pastor? Get out. <laughs> you know, and they, they even returned his 50 shillings. Go. You know, we should have gotten somebody who has money. Yeah. Is that offering or fair? He said it was fair. <laughs> ah, may God guard us. I also had a, another case, similar case, of a lady. You know, 
the, 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 the taxi stopped and uh, she saw a woman inside and fellow people and she thought, ah, this is a safe place. She got in and it was a hijacking. You know, they took her around, took her money, you know. May God protect us from these people in the name of Jesus. Anyone that is planning how he will attack and get money from people here in Nakuru, may you never fall into their hands. Can I hear an amen in Jesus' name? Can I hear a better amen in Jesus' name? The Bible says you will not be afraid of the terror by night. Can you lift up your hands and say in Jesus' name? I will not be afraid of the terror by night. And the Bible says, nor the arrow that flies by day. Do you know there are arrows that fly during the day? What are these arrows? These are wicked plans from people. People who want to undermine you. People who want your life to go. You know, you start a business and then there are people who go, don't buy in that shop. Don't buy in that shop. You know, arrows during the day. There are people who use their tongue as a weapon. You know, if you can get me the verse that says, we shall attack who? Jeremiah with our tongue. We shall attack Jeremiah with our tongue. Can I have that verse? For those who are uh, displaying the scriptures for us. So listen, the tongue can be used as an instrument of war. The tongue can be used as a, as a what? As a, as, a, as, a, as a way to undermine you. Arrows that fly by day. They are not physical arrows. These are words of men. May God protect you from wicked words. You know, words of men, you know, people talk. You know, don't buy in that shop. Don't go to that, to that church. You know, you know, don't go to that church. You know, that church is not good. Arrows of men. I'm trying to look at that verse that says, we will attack him. Yeah, right there. Can we read together? Jeremiah 18, 18. Jeremiah 18, 18. Can we read together? One, two, go. Then they said, come and let us devise plans against Jeremiah. For the law shall not perish from the priest, nor counsel from the wise, nor the word from the prophet. Come and let us attack him with what? The tongue. And let us not give heed to any of his words. Let's attack him with what? The tongue. Let's attack Jeremiah with what? The tongue. Let's destroy him. You know, because the law will never leave his mouth. You know, counsel will never leave his life. The word, the word, the way he prophesies, he will never stop prophesying. We may try to stop him, but he's not going to stop. We may try to tell him not to become a priest, but he's not going to stop. So what are we going to do? Let's use the tongue as an instrument of war. Let us attack him with our tongue. Let us destroy his rep reputation. Let us talk evil about him. When people cannot be able to bring down a church like this, they use the tongue. When people cannot be able to stop me in what I'm doing as a pastor, they will use what? The tongue. Ah, don't go to that church. This pastor is not good. Don't listen to him. You know, a good example, Naboth died because of the tongue. Naboth had done nothing wrong. You remember the story of Naboth? Let me just explain it briefly. There was a day Ahab, the king, was walking around his palace. And he noted a very beautiful garden next to his palace. And he asked around, who owns that garden? And they told him, Naboth. And he decided, let me go see Naboth. And he went to Naboth and said, hey, please, can you sell me your garden? I'll pay you. And Nebo said, I'm sorry, your majesty. I'm sorry, my king. This land is an, an, an ancestral land. It runs in the family. It, 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 it belonged to my great-grandfather, you know. We pass it down in the family. So I, I honor you as my king. You know, there are things you can't sell because they are more valuable than money. Hey, am I talking? Like for me, my grandfather gave me a land before he died. He, when he was subdividing 
land to his sons. He decided to give me part of his land. Of all the grandchildren, he chose me. And he said, I want to give that young man land. That land is so valuable to me. You know, it's valuable more than money. Because it's a gift from my grandfather. You know? I went there, I planted trees, like a thousand trees. Now they are growing. It's like a forest. But I value that land, you know? So, Nabal said, I cannot do what? I cannot give this land. It belongs to our family. Ahab said, no, I'll pay you double. I'm just, I'm, you, you know, I'm not saying exactly, but you know, it was a negotiation. I'll pay you double. I'll even pay you with gold. He said, I'm sorry, your majesty. I can't do that. And Nabal left. Ahab went to his palace and he was very sad. And the wife came, Jezebel. Why are you sad, Ahab? You know, I went to, my, to, 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 to our neighbor here. I wanted his garden. He used to sell me. And the wife said, go eat and drink. Leave the matter to me. And Jezebel planned how Naboth would die. You know, prepare a feast where the king is. You know, and bring very important people. And make sure Naboth is seated among the important people. But put two people near him, vagabonds, who shall testify against him. And they shall say, Naboth has abused the king and has blasphemed God. He has spoken ill against the king and he has disrespected God. By law, that was punishable by death. And that is what happened. And when they were in a meeting, two vagabonds arose and said, this man has just abused the king. And he has also blasphemed God. And if you read your Bible, they stoned him with his children and he died because of the battle of the tongue. Listen, the tongue can bring an accusation against you. The tongue can speak falsehood against you. The tongue can devise plans against you. That is why I'm telling you, be careful. Be careful. And pray against the arrows that fly by day. And I pray today, when they attack you with the tongue, may God give you victory. I say, when they attack you with the tongue, may God give you victory. You know, there are people who are not able to attack you physically, but they can use their tongue. By the way, the greatest battles I have faced since I came to Nakuru are not physical battles. It has been battles of the tongue. People coming up with things that are weird. You know, there was a day now that some people had brought a, you know, let me not even speak those things because they are rumors and I don't want to build them. Because that is what the devil does. He wants people to speak and then you come build on your own. You know, you beat yourself with whatever people are saying. So listen, whatever people say, nowadays I don't worry, I cancel those things in the spirit. And I don't mention them. You, you see, I'm, I'm, I was almost about to say, but I hold it. Because that's what the devil wants you to do. The devil wants you to bring up something and start spreading it out. And then the pastor picks it and say, I hear there are people who are saying that uh, I'm about to die. I'm not dying, you know. So I don't need, <laughs> I will not enter into their group of gossip and their group of slander to their group of hatred. Because when people don't like you, they use their tongue. May God protect you from the tongue. Can you lift up your hands saying in the name of Jesus? May I be protected from the attack of the tongue in the name of Jesus. So whatever is devised against you, whatever is planned against you, may the Lord protect you and guard you. I had a young man that I knew who uh, I met in the U.S., a very good young man. And I told the young man, be careful. When you live in a foreign land, you need to be very disciplined. You need to be very careful. And I told him, listen, because you have come to this land, uh, be, make sure you live a godly life. Because in Kenya, he was a Christian. But when he went to the U.S., you know, there is a lot of, you know, alcohol, party, movie. And then slowly he started doing what? Yeah? Drifting, drifting, drifting. Now he started drinking a little. You know, I'm now in the U.S. I can enjoy some drink. 
And when he, one day he went to a party, he got drunk, he got involved with a young girl, and then in the morning the young girl said, you raped me. And I'm telling you, the young man was arrested, stayed in prison. He used to write to me, oh, pray for me. I told him, I told you, this lady started using her tongue against the young man. You know, it was only by God's grace that the judge decided. You know, young man, you are too young. I will not put you in prison, but I will deport you. So he was deported. He was brought back to Kenya. So what I tell young people, always know that those people around you are not friends. You don't go to these parties. You don't have to go to a party. I lived in the U.S. for many years. They invited me for parties. I never went. Because you take yourself to trouble. I stayed clear. I never had a police case. I was never arrested. Why? Because if you live in the word of God, you live a godly life, who will arrest you? They may say things, but those will be lies and they cannot affect you. This word has a way of protecting you. I've never been arrested. I, only, I was only arrested when I, I was leaving a fellowship. And you know those police in Mombasa, they arrested me because they wanted money. I was leaving. I had come from a fellowship. I was preaching in a fellowship. And I'm heading home. And they arrested me. And they said, yeah, I'm selling banks. Yeah, I'm the one who is distributing drugs at night. And I said, I'm a preacher. They said, how do we know? I told them I can preach to them. I told them, give me a minute. I'll preach. <laughs> you know, and we're in the streets. And uh, they told me, no, 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 pastor, bring something. We just want tea. And I told them, no, the, the money I have is offering. I was given offering. And you as a police, you are not supposed to eat an offering. It is only for a priest. And I told them, do you want to eat the offering? Yeah, I showed them, this is offering. You want to take it? They said, Pastor, go home. Go home. They don't want trouble. <laughs> that was the only time I was arrested. The other time I had trouble with the law, I did not display my insurance. And they arrested my wife. And I was like, uh, I'm, I'm the one who owns the car. And hey, give us this money. No, let's go to court. And I was taken to court for failure to display insurance. They were asking for 10,000, 20,000. The court only fined me 2,000. And I was out. And I looked at them. Hey, give me my keys. <laughs> they were like, hey, pastor. Yeah, today is your day. I said, yes, bring the keys. I go home. So, you know, so if you live a godly life, you will not have trouble with the law. But they will attack you with what? The tongue. May God protect you from the battles of the tongue. Can I hear better? Amen. Now, if we go back to the book of Psalms, chapter 91, the Bible says, you'll not be afraid. That is verse 5. You'll not be afraid of the terror by night, nor the arrow that flies during what? The day. May God guard you from the plans of men, the organization of men, the battles of the tongue. And then the next one, the Bible says, nor of the sickness that walks in the darkness. Oh, the pestilence that walks in the darkness. So what I'm saying, may God protect you from these things this year. Disease that walks in the darkness. Disease that kills others. May God guard you from it. Whatever that has destroyed others will not destroy you. In the mighty name of Jesus. The Bible says, you will not be afraid for the Lord will protect you. The Lord will cover you from the disease that walks where? In the darkness. There are many diseases. Can, can you give me the verse that says, I will bless your water. I will bless your food. And I will take away sickness from you. Some of us get sick because of the food we are eating. And that is why sometimes it's good to give your body a break through fasting. Give your body what? Break through what? Fasting. The Bible says, I will bless your food. Because some of the sicknesses that we are having nowadays is because of what? The food we are eating. You know, I found my grandfather, you know, who lived to 108 years. And he used to eat very original food. He was never diagnosed with any sickness until he died. And he died because of 
old age, organ failure, not because of a sickness. And I used to, I remember when I was small, every time my grandfather would like not be feeling well, he knew those trees. He would, we would go to the forest with him. I hope I had a pen and I wrote all those trees. Because we enter into the forest, you get leaves from this tree, get uh, some roots from another tree, and we'll go home and he'll boil. And he'll drink a cup or two and he'll be okay. He never went to hospital. But he ate original food. Original food. No mango, you know. Some of this food we are eating. I'm sorry to say I know the president is pushing for the GMOs. So that we may be what? A food uh, secure country. And I'm not saying there is nothing wrong with that. I don't know much about GMOs. I have not done studies about GMOs. The only thing I can pray is that, that the food they bring us will not bring us trouble. Can we read it together? Exodus 23, 25. One, two, go. So you shall serve the Lord your God. May you serve him. And he will bless your bread. And you are water. And I will take sickness away from the midst of you. So what God is saying, there is food you can eat that is not blessed. And it may bring what? Sickness in your body. And that is why God is saying, whatever food you eat, I bless it. And when I bless your food, I bless your water, I will take away sickness from you. Because honestly, some of the sicknesses we are struggling with today is because of contaminated water. Brucellas, typhoid, you name it. You know, some of these problems you are facing today is because of what? It's because of the water you drink. And that is why fasting will help you. Because some of the parasites you have in your stomach will die. By the way, when you are fasting, they come out. Kama una minyo yote, out. Lakini kama ufungi, minyo inazidi kunona kwa tumbo. Na kuzunguka huko. Mi naomba ufungi yyo minyo yote ihame. Nyimu naonaje, buwana asifiwe. <laughs> if you fast, you know. So, water carries a lot of what? Disease. Brucellus, what else? Typhoid, what else? Yeah, for those who have done a little bit of studies. Yeah, Corella. Uh -huh. It's because of the water. And the Bible says, I'll bless your bread. And some of the things we are eating, they are full of chemicals. They are, you know, they are, they are, they are, they are, they are. It's food that is not good for your body. But God says, oh, if you serve me, if you serve me, if you serve me, I will bless your bread. May the Lord bless every food you'll ever eat. It will never bring sickness into your body. And the Bible says, I'll bless your water and I'll take away what? Sickness from you. So this year I pray, may God take away sickness from your life. You will not be sickly in Jesus' name. Your life will not be cut short because of sickness. Can I hear better? Amen. I pray may the Lord protect you from whatever that is killing people. Because sometimes the reason why I bring this faith to us is because... Some of us, we have no choice. You have to drink that water. You know, you have to eat that food. If we had a choice, you know, some of us, you don't have a health insurance. Let's be honest, even the one for NHIF, the one for the government, you don't have. So unless God becomes your covering, what will, and you know, these people are not ignorant. It's because of lack. You know, let's be honest, Pastor Festus. There are people in this this city, will you pay for insurance or will you buy food? You know, you weigh. You weigh those two things. Insurance or food. Food. You know, and then you say whatever happened, happens. <laughs> and that's why I'm saying in his name, because he is our God. We don't have anywhere to run to, but we can run to God. And we say, oh God, we serve you. Bless our food. Bless our water. Take away sickness from among us. We refuse cancer. Hey, hallelujah. We refuse arthritis. We come against diabetes. 
We come against blood pressure. Oh God, deliver our body from these sicknesses of lifestyle. Sometimes there is a lot of pressure in life. You know, a lot of demands in life. Until somebody gets what? Blood pressure. Because of, you know, being shaken, shaken all over, shaken all over. Life has become, you know, if you live in the village, most people who live in the village, they don't get blood pressure. Do you know why? In the village you wake up and it is not the alarm. You know, what wakes you up in the village? In the village, you wake up, you drink milk, you go to Shamba, you know, you till the land. In the evening, you come back home, you take the goats, wherever you are supposed to get. When will, but in the city, you need rent, you know, school fees, loan. Kwanza za simu, tara. Yungine na hituwa nimi? Sasa mmeretewa yungine pia na hituwa hasla fan. Na fuliza. Like, I have a problem with this fuliza. I get out, I go back. I get out. You know, I don't know what I'm going to do. You know, I'm your pastor. It's good to be honest with you. You know, I, I, I declare. I, I even press where I opt out. I opt out. And I say, listen to me, Fuliza. I have opted out and I'm not getting back there. And then I go to a petrol station or maybe I'm trying to pay something on supermarket. I don't have enough money. And then, you know, when you try to pay, they usually ask, do you want to Fuliza? And I say, yes. I need to pay my shopping. Yes, Fuliza. You know, right now I have a debt of Fuliza. Oh, may God help me. And may God help all of you who are everywhere. You have Hasra Fund, you have Fuliza, you have Tala. Which other one? Yeah. Mshwari, eh? Branch. Name them. Yeah. Nyimu na tajataja nyindi omuko huko. Yeah. Oh, full of debts. Debt, debt everywhere. Oh, may God deliver us from debt. You know, there was a time I stayed without Fuliza for a very long time. And I made up my mind. I'm not going to Fuliza. But situations, you find yourself in a place where such money comes to you very easily. Can I see with a show of hand, how many are on Hustler Fund? Maybe you have taken a certain amount. And it's okay to lift up your hand. May God help you to pay. Hallelujah. I have, I have not yet borrowed from Hasla Fund. How is it taking you? Is it good? Yeah. And it has good lower interest rates. Oh, okay. As long as you pay. May God help you to do what? <laughs> to pay. Hallelujah. So the Bible says you shall serve. So I was trying to say living in the city has a lot of what? Pressure. So may God protect you from these diseases of lifestyle. Amen. Sometimes we don't, don't do enough exercise because we move from here to there with matatus and with course. So may God deliver you from the sickness that walks in darkness. And finally, the Bible says, nor the destruction that lays waste in the noonday. May the Lord also protect you from destruction. You never die with fire or accidents. Oh, hallelujah. Terrorist ac action activities will never kill you in the name of Jesus. Can I hear better? Amen. You know, when I was in Nairobi, when they were bombing the city, there was a time they bombed it in 1997. I was near the, the embassy, the U.S. embassy. I was not very far. And I remember I noted it's like the city shook because I was in the, in the, in the streets. And... Uh, what even killed many people that day, because I saw it, was when they bombed the embassy, the buildings that had glasses, they started falling. And they were falling on us. So I remember I hid myself inside a building and I could see glass falling. And I would see people being hit by those glasses and dying. And we had people on the streets dead, bleeding. And I tried to, I was running after that because I thought maybe it was jets that were dropping bombs everywhere. So you were running everywhere. So instead of running away from where they, were, they had bombed, I ran where? You know, I was running railways. 
You know, people had blood all over their faces. I, I was trying to think, who will you help? I was a young man. I was not uh, a, a, a big man, but I was a young man. And uh, I, you, are, you are trying to think, who will you help and who will you leave? You know, it was bloody everywhere. That was destruction in the noonday. May God protect us from such matters. May God protect us from such matters in Jesus' name. I say again as a country, may we not go through what we have gone through. I have gone to hospital. Uh, before I left Nairobi, they bombed uh, Gikomba market. And we had some church members who were working there. A, few, a, a number of people died. And then I was called by a few members. They were in hospital. And I went to Kenyatta to see people and the effects of a bomb. And I remember one lady in particular, she got married and I'm so happy for her because she had fragments of the bomb entering her chest. You know? So when they took an x-ray, she had so many pieces inside her body. So they were wondering if we touch them, will she bleed to death? Some they decided because they were very near the heart, they leave them. You know? And she had to undergo a couple of surgeries. We walked with her. I went to that ward. People had no legs. People had no hands. People were bleeding. And I met that girl. She was also struggling to breathe. She was on oxygen. Fragments of the bomb had entered her. May God protect us from such things. May, may, may God lead us as a country. May God cover us as a country. Because we did not do anything wrong to these people. There is nothing we did. We never went to take their land. We never. We are here, innocent. And I don't know why they come after us. Why? You know, may just, uh, my prayer is that this year, may God protect us from terrorism and terrorist acts, activities. When I was very new here in Nakuru, when we were halfway, I, the police came and warned me when we were very new. We had about, uh, uh, peop, about 200 people coming in this church. So the police targeted some of the big churches in this in in the city and they came and warned me that there, there there were possibilities of attacks in churches in nakuru but i did not tell members i prayed because if i tell you you disappear you know you disappear you not come you'll be like hey busy so i prayed and i brought security officers i don't know if you remember there was a time we had police out here two of them with guns it's all that I did not want to tell you a lot, but we were going through high alerts, you know, and they were saying they are targeting, they will kill pastors. So even we were told to go with the bodyguards. So I did not have, have money for bodyguards. What do you do, Pastor Festus? So I used to tell God, you know, you, <laughs> you get out of the street and you're like, God, me and you. Whatever happens, happens. But we thank God for the facts in this land and we will have peace in jesus name can we rise on our feet and we pray may god protect us from what destruction during the day may god protect us from every form of what destruction can you lift up your hands and i want you to pray for covering that this year may the lord guard you may you receive covering from every area and every battle that may affect you in any, any battle of the town, any plan from the wicked people and wicked uh, organizations, may God protect you and guard you in the name of Jesus. Lift up your hands in prayer. And I want you to pray. Help me that I will never fall by the hand of a wicked man. I will never fall by the hand of a wicked man. I will never fall by the hand of a wicked man. Oh God, I pray for your protection. I pray for your covering. I pray no evil will ever take place in my life. I pray the Lord God, when they organize themselves against me, oh God, I pray for your covering. I pray for your help. I pray, oh God, for your presence, oh God. I pray that you may be with us, oh God, that you may protect us, my Father. Oh, we lift up our hands before you. We have nowhere to find help.
we have nowhere to find uh, 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 pr protection. We come to you because God, you are our protector. You are our covering. Oh God, our hearts sometimes uh, uh, are scared. Sometimes we feel we have nowhere to go to, but we come to you. Father, I pray, may you protect this city. May you protect our country from the acts of violence in the name of Jesus. May you protect us this year from every activity that is evil in the name of Jesus. We pray for your hand. We pray for your hand upon our lives in the name of Jesus. We pray for your protection in the name of Jesus. We pray for your covering in the name of Jesus. We pray, O oh God, let thy hand rest upon us, Lord, in the name of Jesus. Let your presence, O oh God, rest upon us in the name of Jesus. I pray that the battle of the tongue will not affect our business, will not affect our career, will not affect uh, this church. Every tongue that rises up uh, against the work we are doing here for the kingdom, we silence that tongue. We overthrow the plans of wickedness in the name of Jesus. They say, let us arise, Jeremiah 18, 18. Let us arise and attack and attack Jeremiah. Let us arise and attack Jeremiah. We shall attack him with our tongue. We shall attack him with our tongue. Let us arise and attack Jeremiah. We shall attack him with our tongue. But I pray, may God protect you. May God guard you. May the favor of the Lord rest upon you. Every tongue that shall rise up against you. Oh God, we, we condemn that tongue. We silence the effect of the the the, 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 the the, the words that are spoken we 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 we, we overthrow the plans of wicked uh, wickedness in the name of jesus uh, every tongue that shall rise against us uh, father we silence that tongue let their wisdom be turned into foolishness uh, let the words that are spoken against our lives uh, never affect us negatively whatever that is spoken that is negative uh, like in the days of Nebuchadnezzar, he lost his life because of the tongue he lost his life uh, because somebody arose a vagabond arose and said a lie against him and he lost his life with his sons because of people who formed a group people who organized themselves to destroy neighbor i will not die like neighbor i will not die like neighbor anyone organizing themselves anyone who is planning anything evil against my life i overthrow it in the name of jesus i overthrow wicked plans in the name of jesus I defeat every plan of wickedness in the name of Jesus. I pray from today that whatever that is planned against you, that is negative, that is evil, will not come into fruition, will not happen. Oh, Father, we overthrow every falsehood, every lie. We overthrow every demonic expectations. We overthrow every demonic imagination. We overthrow every demonic plan against our lives. I declare I will survive. I declare I will survive. Every battle of the tongue I will survive. Let us arise and attack Jeremiah with our tongue. But you gave Jeremiah victory. You gave him victory. They spoke lies against him but he was victorious. They rose up against Jeremiah but he was victorious. I declare your business will not crumble because of the tongue of men. Your career will not crumble because of uh, envy and jealousy and every form of battle of the tongue oh yes i declare your marriage will be stable in the name of jesus every battle of the tongue we overcome it now can you come against disease and sickness now declare this year i'm not going to be sick i pray that every disease that walks in the darkness i pray it has no power over me oh god bless my friend my, my bread and my water oh god take away sickness from me i will serve you this year i will serve you. I will serve you God. With my family, we shall serve you. Take away sickness and disease from our midst to God. We will not be sickly. We will not be sickly. In the name of Jesus. We will not be sickly. In the name of Jesus. Take away sickness and disease from our minister. Take away sickness and disease from our bodies. Take away sickness and disease from our families. Oh God, we pray for divine health. We pray for divine health. We pray for divine health. In the mighty name of Jesus, we come against destruction that lays waste in the noonday. Every form of destruction, if it is fire, if it is an accident, 
I declare in the mighty name of Jesus, uh, I will not be involved in any accident. Uh, I will travel and I will arrive where I'm going safely. In the mighty name of Jesus, uh, I plant uh, prayer as an investment uh, and I declare all journeys that I'm going to, uh, to, wherever I'm going to travel to, I pray for covering, I pray for protection. Every destruction of the noonday, every form of accidents and incidences, uh, every attack of the enemy has no power over us in the name of Jesus. I will not die on the road. My bones will not be broken on the, when I'm traveling. I will, my blood will not be shed on the road. I decree and I declare for I have made my God my refuge. I have put my hope on my God. In him I find my rest, uh, my refuge. In him I find peace. In him I find protection. None of you shall die in an accident. None of you shall be involved in an accident. None of you shall be involved in any form of destruction. I decree and I declare the covering of God upon your lives in the name of Jesus. There will be no fire to destroy your life. There will be no accidents to destroy your life. There will be no any form of violence during the day that will destroy your life. I decree covering upon each and every one of us in the mighty name of Jesus. Just lift up your hands. I pray this prayer. Father, I ask you in your name that you may cover each and every person that is in this service. We pray that this year will be a year of victory. Oh yes, we come against accidents, incidences. We come against battles of the tongue. We come against sickness in the name of Jesus. And we pray because we have power and authority to command how our lives will be. We declare there will be no pain. There will be no affliction. There will be no disease. There will be no uh, accidents in the name of Jesus. Every battle of the night, we overcome it. We shall be safe in our homes as we, as we travel home we will be protected those wicked men who plan evil against us we turn their plans into nothing oh yes we overthrow every wicked plan against our lives and our our, our loved ones in the mighty name of jesus father we thank you because you promise to you will be our refuge you promise you will be our covering and we receive that covering by faith in the name of the father the son and the holy spirit we pray Amen. May we be seated now as we prepare. Hallelujah. Have you been blessed this morning? May the Lord guard you from every accident, incidences, and battles of the tongue. Hallelujah. Whatever battle that shall arise against you, we have prayed and we continue to pray. Amen. Now, um, in the Kiswahili service, in the Mamlaka service, will be an having a service of anointing and the purpose of anointing is to do a service for us and we declare those prayers we are praying we are covered through the year i'm going to do seven levels of uh what can i say of service we started with health last sunday today we are talking about protection uh we'll go like that we, we are going to talk about career we are going to talk, you know, the seven pillars that, you know, hold you. We are going to talk about your salvation. We are going to talk. So every Sunday for the next seven Sundays, every Sunday I will talk about the seven pillars that brings protection to a human being. And one of, the, one of it is what? Health. And today we have talked about what? Protection. So we are going to go every Sunday. Every Sunday we'll be talking about all those things. And they are very important in your life. And please remember also we are still fasting. We have a 21 day fasting for the church. Every member we have requested you to pray and fast. Oh pastor I'm not able to fast. I feel very weak. Please fasting is not only spiritually beneficial but also health wise. So it's okay to fast so that you can declare health in your body. Can I hear an amen? So we are on a 21 day fasting. You can do uh, the one for only drinking fluids, you know, for the 21 days. If you feel you are so weak and you feel like you are dying, <laughs> it's good to be honest. You, even though you are walking like this in town, then do a 6 to 6 fasting. From 6 to 
6 p.m. Now, but I would really encourage the fasting where you drink fluids, like you can drink juice, you can drink water, you can drink tea, you can drink milk. It's a good fast. But also for the leaders, we are doing a 40-day fasting. So if you're a leader and uh, we work with you, you know you're the one who said you are called. I'm not the one who told you that you are called. You told me that you have a calling in your life. So you can be leading the sheep and you are not sacrificing and fasting. So we need those who are called to do a 40-day fasting. You can drink again what I've said. You can drink milk. You can drink what? You can drink tea. I like being honest because sometimes pastors may tell you to fast and they tell you they are drinking water. Me, I'm drinking a lot of water with my team, but also we are drinking one yogurt every day. So you can also do that. You can use a... Uh, you can use yogurt. There is a reason why I love yogurt. Because of calcium. So, and you can do it for 40 days with yogurt. And you'll not die, by the way. You just lose around uh, 10 to 15 kgs. Hallelujah. <laughs> and which also is good. Simunata could lose weight. Especially those who want to lose weight. You have a big stomach. D don't fast because of the stomach. <laughs> Fast because you want to seek God. But by the time you are finishing 40 days, the stomach will be gone. You don't need gym. Hallelujah. Kwanza kama nyewe ni mwanaume na umeanza kupata nyama na uku nyuma. Wee wacha mchezu. Toa hizo nyama. Amen. Hallelujah. Let me give, uh, let's, let's take our offerings now. Wherever you are watching from, there is a pay bill number that is on your screen. And you can join us as we continue in prayer and fasting. And also as you give your offerings. And God will bless you. Tomorrow, we are here. A prayer from 5 to 7. And uh, Barnabas, we are starting our prayers from 8 to 11 midnight. Okay? So if you're within Barnabas uh, from tomorrow, I'll be leading prayers from 8 p.m. to 11. And here in town, from 5 to 7. Two hours of prayer. In Barnabas, we do three hours of prayer. And also the church is open. You can pray through the night. God bless you and welcome. Now, Father, in Jesus' name, I sanctify the offering that your people are giving early in the morning. I decree it is sanctified and cleansed for the work of ministry. And I pray a blessing upon each and every person as they give. In Jesus' name, we pray and we say amen. There is a pay bill number that is on your screen. You can use that pay bill number, 842769. Uh, account, you can write pledge. You can write offering, tithe, or sacrifice, or whatever you feel in your heart. God bless you as you give your offering, and uh, thank you for following us. Before I leave, I want to pray for someone who wants to give their life to Jesus. I believe, what shall it profit you that you may gain the whole world, yet you lose your soul? Sometimes the church may lose its course and preach prosperity a lot, forgetting that these things will end, but your soul is very key. So I want to pray for you. If there you want to give your life to Jesus, repeat this prayer after me. Say, Lord Jesus, forgive me of my sins. I dedicate my life to you. Lead me into your paths. Write my name in the book of life and fill me with your Holy Spirit. And from today I believe in my heart and I confess with my mouth that I'm born again. In Jesus' name, amen. Father, I pray for anyone who made that prayer with a sincere heart. May their journey with you begin. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.